Hello everybody, here to do another Q&A for you guys. Um, thank you to everybody who sent me your questions. I know I kind of left it to last minute to let you all know that I was gonna do this, but uh, I still got a lot of great questions anyhow, so I'm going to read out the few that I chose. Um, so the first one is from Lord Smoke 911 from Twitter. Uh, he said, how exciting has it been to work on the Joy Metaverse with such spectacular models? I hope you have an excellent end of the year. Why, Lord Smoke, what a fortuitous question to ask me, um, because all I want to do is talk about Joy. Uh, we're so excited about Joy. Joy is the erotic metaverse, and as far as I know, it's the only one that's out there right now. We're still building it out, but we expect to launch um, early in 2022. Um, it's a platform where users can interact with each other. They can interact with their favorite creators. Creators will be able to create content unlike anything that you've ever seen before. We've got 3D hologram captures. We've got 360 videos, as well as so many other features that is just gonna make this such an incredibly unique experience for everybody. And I truly believe that it is the future of the adult industry. So if you wanna check it out, the beta version is there. You can kind of walk around in the space and take a look. It's browser-based, so you don't need to be on an app or some kind of crazy engine. Um, you don't need to be in VR, though it is obviously VR capable. But you can literally just go to joi.city and you can walk around in the space and kind of check it out and just see um, the massive opportunities that this place is going to present and I'm just like over the moon about this and obviously so much more to come. Okay, the next one is from Rockets, also from Twitter. Uh, how do you prepare for shoot with squirters, especially when it comes to equipment? What is the pre-shoot conversation like? So this is a great question because I have had situations before where I didn't ask the performer before I started filming whether or not she was a squirter. And I very much regretted that um, because nobody likes a surprise squirter. It actually happened to me, a very distinctive memory that I have was I was shooting at this really nice house out in Agora and I was shooting this girl. It was just a solo girl masturbation. So, you know, a lot of times girls don't necessarily squirt in those situations. It's usually like in a boy girl scene or something. And she was on this like purple velvet couch and she squirted all over the couch. And I was just like, I just remember as it was happening, I just wanted to be like, no, but then I would have ruined the end and it wouldn't have stopped her from squirting anyway. So it was like, I just kind of had to film it and let it happen. And then afterwards I like mopped it up kind of with a paper towel as much as I could. And then I just put a fan on it and I just left the fan on it all day. And I was like praying that it would be dry by the time the owner got home. Because, you know, when you're shooting a squirting scene, like you need to make sure that you're not dealing with a lot of porous surfaces that are hard to clean. You want like a pleather couch. You want, um, you know, like a wood floor or a marble floor with no carpet. You don't want pillows that could get ruined. Like there's a lot of things that you need to take into account. You also need to take into account what kind of squirter she is. Um, a great example is when I was shooting Marika Hayes and I had no idea that that girl had like the projectional abilities that she has. And I remember filming it and I mean, it went so far and I was on the wide cam in close. Thankfully, I had placed myself kind of off to the side. So it kind of just went past me. But I mean, if I had been in the line of fire, like she could have ruined my camera. And actually I did get squirted on once by Adriana Chechik when I was shooting a solo scene of her for my website, hollyrandall.com. Um, and, uh, but I didn't mind because it was Adriana and you know, it's like rite of passage to get squirted on by Adriana Chechik. And it wasn't that much. It was just like on my leg, it didn't get on the camera. So that was fine. But yeah, squirting is definitely something that one needs to take into account. And um, there needs to be a pre-shoot conversation about that for sure. All right, my next question is from Lee Reader from Twitter. Holly, you've always been a class act. Thank you. And I have always wanted to hear your recovery story. Have you ever given it before? So he's referring specifically to my alcohol recovery story. I was an alcoholic. I've been sober for three and a half years now. I had a previous chunk of long-term sobriety, fell off the wagon, got back on, and um, I'm doing I'm doing okay these days. Um, I have told my story. I've told my story actually so many times that I kind of don't want to tell it again here because a lot of my listeners have heard it and are probably sick of it. 
but you can actually go watch a clip where I talk about pretty much the whole thing in an interview that I did where Ryan Keeley interviewed me for my podcast. The title of it is uh, Holly Talks Openly About Her Struggles with Alcoholism. So you can just like Google that on YouTube. Otherwise, um, I'll try to provide a little link here so you guys can just click on it and then you can go watch that for yourself. And Lee, thank you for asking. Uh, Denise, D-E-N-I-Z, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, I don't know if you're a girl or a boy, but you did ask, will you make a short movie for OnlyFans? Who would you like to play with? Um, the answer is, sadly, my friend, no. I don't ever plan to do anything more explicit than I'm already doing. I just do softcore nudes, um, so I don't plan to play with anybody. And, you know, honestly, like, that would also be a weird situation for me to find myself in because, you know, I really look at other performers as like my coworkers and my friends, and it feels very strange to cross the line and like do a scene with any of them. I just feel like professionally, I don't know, it would just feel compromising and it's just something that I wouldn't be comfortable with. So um, sadly, I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but um, you know, you can always, one can always dream. Okay, next question is from Danny Hill, who is one of my like biggest supporters. Danny, I love you. You're like on all my platforms and I'm always so happy to hear from you. Uh, so he asks, besides your own, <laughs> what are your favorite styles of photography? So I assume you mean like besides glamour photography, which is pretty much what I do. I mean, you know, I admire all different forms of photography where people can really like master light or master a situation and really capture a moment. Um, really cool reportage photography is amazing. Um, beautiful artistic black and white stuff. Um, I mean, you know, there's some incredible animal wildlife photography out there. I mean, basically anybody who can capture like that kind of, you know, quintessential, um, really striking moment, you know, I'm a fan of it. Okay, so the next question is from Michael from New York. Hi, Michael. Um, my favorite decade of porn was the 2000s to the golden age of Gonzo, and there were a few major names that impacted that decade. What is your favorite decade and year of porn and why? That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I've been in the industry for 23 years, so I've seen, I've seen the evolution of different, you know, eras of porn. Um, I mean, I have to say I'm really excited about the era that we're in right now, you know, with technology pushing new um, capabilities like the metaverse, which I talked about earlier, which I'm thrilled about, to the way that the power dynamic has shifted and really put a lot of power in the hands of performers. That's been a really cool thing to see and to see like everybody kind of having more autonomy over their career, being able to set boundaries and really being able to do the things that they wanna do and be more comfortable in their own space. Um, that's an evolution that has been really wonderful and exciting for me to see. So I would say that my favorite era is right now. I'm really happy with the way things are going. Okay, next question is from Ineffable Ken, my favorite OnlyFans follower. Um, and Ken, don't think I've noticed that you've changed your name a couple of times. Um, clearly, you're my favorite OnlyFans follower because of your sharp wit. But let's get to the actual question that you sent, which was, what was the process of deciding that you wanted to be in front of the camera like? When did the idea start to take root and what factors were involved? So there's actually a whole other YouTube video out there about kind of why I started modeling nude. Um, if you just search it on my YouTube channel or I'll provide a link. Um, it's basically about like how my nudes got accidentally leaked and that kind of like opened my mind to possibly modeling nude because fuck it, they were already out there. So I don't wanna go like too deep into the story because a lot of you guys have heard it already. Um, but yeah, I think it was just kind of like, I became more comfortable with the idea um, as I got older. And actually it's been a really rewarding process for me because the positive feedback from my fans has been so incredible, especially like through my pregnancy and through my postpartum recovery, which I kind of feel still feel like I'm in because I'm like 10 pounds off from my goal weight. But the way that um, my fans have embraced my body and have been like so kind to me has really made like a world of difference for me and um, for really like my emotional health. I feel better about the way that I look now 
being 10 pounds heavier than usual, having, you know, still major body changes from having had a baby than I did before when I was skinnier and I was like fitter and younger and tighter. And it's really all due to um, my amazing fans who I just can't, couldn't be more grateful towards. So thank you guys so much. Okay, so the next question is from Sam. Um, uh, he asks, I'd really like to learn about the financial aspects of pornography. With the prevalence of free porn, how do you and other producers make money? What are the distribution channels? How has the internet positively and negatively impacted the producers? So this is a complicated question and um, it's kind of hard to answer because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of different sides to this. So the prevalence of free porn. So yes, initially people felt that it really hurt them um, when the tube sites first came out, a lot of people's content was being stolen and posted onto the tube sites and people weren't paying for memberships anymore. Um, I know a lot of businesses went under, uh, but other businesses, it hasn't really affected so much. You know, people use the opportunity to advertise for their website and certain free sites such as Pornhub actually pay you for the views on your videos. So you actually get money from places like Pornhub for people watching your content for free. But people usually post like shorter versions of their scenes so that you go and join their site to see the entire thing. Um, obviously, OnlyFans has completely changed the landscape for performers because that has really enabled what I think the industry was missing before they came along. And that was the ability for fans to connect directly with the performers. Cause that's something you can't steal and that's something that you can't mimic, right? So the ability for a fan to talk directly to their favorite porn star is something that has really like changed the landscape and has put so much power into the hands of the performers. So that's been really exciting to see. Um, in terms of distribution channels, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different ones. Like I have a lot of different streams of revenue. Obviously there's the old school, like DVD and cable TV market, which is definitely shrinking. I make almost nothing from that now. Um, there's this, my YouTube channel where, you know, I get paid, um, from YouTube, from the videos that they actually monetize, which isn't a lot of them to be honest, but that's another stream of revenue. Um, people can also make money on Instagram now. Um, people can make money on Twitter now. Um, but the truth is, is that we've really had to diversify and we've had to find other ways to make money. I mean, there's obviously my main website, you know, which doesn't do so well on its own. Um, I license my content to like adult time has one of my channels on there. Um, I, every once in a while sell sets to various magazines for like a minuscule amount of money. Um, that's pretty rare though. So there's a lot of like different ways, um, that I personally make money, but you know, the bigger brands such as, you know, say like Vixen, like Twisties, like browsers, you know, those are paid sites and they're still doing really well. And it just shows that people are still willing to pay for content that is really well produced and really appeals to whatever that they're into. Because yes, it's true that most people don't pay for their porn, but so many people watch porn that even if like 0.5% of people pay for their porn, that's still a large number of people. Um, you just have to really put out a product that people want in order to encourage them to pay for their porn. Uh, here's another question from Danny Hill. Um, I don't know if I'm too late, but just thought of this question. How are POV shot when they aren't shot with the male talent themselves? Um, it's, it's quite hilarious and I've actually like, my, my friend, Mike Quasar has like shown me pictures of like him literally like being over the guy's shoulder, like face to face while the guy's getting, you know, like whatever done to him. And just, you know, I mean, there's no way around it. You have to get really close to the male talent and literally like put the camera on his shoulder and almost be like in the scene yourself. It's a very intimate experience. And, um, I think it only, you know, works with very experienced cameramen and also probably like very experienced male performers who don't get queasy about a guy like breathing down their neck, you know, while they're trying to perform. So yeah, it's just a matter of two people getting really, really close. Okay, so this wasn't a question that was actually submitted to me, but I've seen it a couple times in the comments, so I thought I would clear it up. People have been asking what happened to my old studio and why am I shooting in this big white void? 
Okay. So the reason is, is that we lost that studio during the pandemic, right? When quarantine happened and everything shut down, my sound engineer couldn't really continue to keep a place that he was paying rent on that he couldn't use. So he let it go. And to be fair, like we were kind of thinking about going somewhere else anyhow. Um, so, you know, come end of 2021, we're like kind of coming out of quarantine, but you know, things are very much up in the air. It's been hard to find a space we have been looking. So in the meantime, I have been using my photography studio, which is a big white cyclorama because literally this is the only place that I have. I, I, I do like it because it's nice and clean, but it's definitely not like something that I want to stick with forever. I understand that some of you complain that they don't like it and there's nothing you know, to the walls and it's not interesting. I get that, but this is all I got. So you're just gonna have to deal with it until we actually find a real studio. And when that happens, um, I promise I will try to dress it up and look much nicer than um, this white void. But until then, this is what you got. This is all I got, people. You're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Last question, and I do have a lot of people ask me this. Uh, where does one submit a porn script? So. People aren't really looking for porn scripts. There's a couple of people in the industry that that write porn scripts quite frequently for companies that kind of understand um, how the logistics work. Like Sean Alf is one of them. He's won quite a, he's written quite a few award-winning scripts. So, and the thing is, like people have sent me porn scripts many a time. And one of the things that you really need to remember when you're writing a porn script is you've got to think about the budget because we are not a Hollywood movie. And there's a lot of restrictions that the adult industry faces that mainstream does not. Like we cannot shoot in public places, right? Without a release, without release from the people in the background. When you see those scenes in Hollywood movies of them at the mall and there's a bunch of people in the background, they rented out the mall, they shut down the mall, that hired all of those extras in the background, and you can only imagine how much that costs. We can't do that. We just don't have the money for that. So you also have to think about like what performers are available and how you can kind of manage it so that you don't bring a lot of different people in on different days. You can kind of knock out as much content in one day, as much dialogue in one day, also, locations are a huge limit for us. I've talked about this before. Locations are one of the hardest things for us to acquire in the adult industry. Most places just don't want porn shot at their house, which, you know, I understand. Um, or if they do, they don't fall within our budget. So, you know, you can't come up with these kind of grandiose ideas of like, oh, you want a scene shot at a gas station. Like we just, we just can't do that, right? It's almost always just gotta be like a house. Um, so there's a lot of limitations with writing a porn script. And so that's why people aren't really looking for a porn script to just come in from any every man because a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to deal with and um and it's not easy to do i've written quite a few porn scripts myself and um, let me tell you it is tough so my answer is nowhere <laughs> that's my answer i'm very sorry <laughs> all right guys that's it thank you so much for submitting your questions i'll do another one of these in a couple of months so if you have any new burning questions questions that you've always wanted to ask me about porn make sure that you save them or you can email them to me now at hollyrandallunfiltered at gmail.com.